We're on the ILS approach to runway 10 at Lafayette, Indiana. The visibility is awful, reported at just one half mile, bare minimums. There's nothing like shooting approaches to minimums to get the heart pumping. Even seeing this in the sim is enough to get a beat or two of sweat going. Slowly, the approach lights start peeking into view. And right about here, we see the threshold lights, the runway end lights, and the pappy lights off to the right. We're just a little bit more than a half mile from the runway itself. Those approach lights were truly a godsend here. But what happens if they aren't working on the approach? Let's say we're planning this flight to Lafayette and we check NOTAMs beforehand as any pilot should. It turns out that the approach lighting system for runway 10 is in fact out of service. Let's see that view again at just over a half a mile, this time without the approach lights, or ALS for short. It's much more challenging to gain sight of the runway environment, which would allow us to go below minimums and land. Do the regs still allow us to use the one half mile visibility if the approach lights are out? For the answer, we'll need to open up the terminal procedure publication. Anyone will do, but we'll use the one for this region. One of the first pages lists tables for inoperative components. The first table is for ILS approaches like the one we're on, and says that for any approach lighting system except ODALs, we increase visibility minimums by a quarter mile. This is the approach plate for the ILS we were on. The approach lighting system on this one is a medium intensity approach light system with runway alignment indicator lights, Mouser. In other words, it applies for this table. Here are the minimums for the approach. We should increase the visibility minimum for the ILS from one half mile to three quarters of a mile. What about the localizer only encircling minimums? Further down on the in-op components page, we see how to treat approaches other than an ILS. For our in-op mouser, we need to increase minimums by a half mile. Let's just focus on the minimums for CAT-A and B aircraft. For the localizer, we need to go up to a full mile and the circling minimum becomes a mile and a half. These different sources of information are all a bit unwieldy. In the modern era with electronic flight bags like ForeFlight, we can easily pull up the approach plates while in flight, but it's a bit tougher to pull up the terminal procedure publication page to see the in-op component tables. If you're a paid Jeppesen subscriber, it gets a fair bit easier. Here's the jet plate for the same approach, ILS-10 at Lafayette. The minimum section is also at the bottom, but it's arranged a bit differently. For the ILS, the visibility minimums are given with both full equipment functionality at a half mile and for when the approach lighting system is out at three quarters of a mile. The same information is given for the localizer minimums. If you don't want to shell out the money for the JEP subscription, you'll have to be aware of how to find these standard changes to visibility minimums in the event of an equipment outage. Sometimes though, the FAA charts make life a little easier on you. Let's look at another airport, San Jose International, where we see a NOTAM that the approach lighting system for runway 12 right is out of service. Now, on the approach plate for this one, there's a little more info given in the notes section. We see that when the mouser is in op, we increase the localizer minimums for CAT C and D aircraft to one mile. Here are those minimums. By the way, I realize the plural of minimum is minima, and that's what the FAA actually uses, but many of us still say minimums and it just feels less awkward. The notes section tells us the visibility minimums for CAT C and D on the localizer go up to a mile. For the rest of them, we'll have to go back to the in-op components table. The ILS will again increase by one quarter to three quarters of a mile. The localizer for CATs A and B increases by a half mile to a full statute mile, so they'll be the same as the increased C and D minimums on the loc. Now, we also have minimums for the sidestep procedure to the parallel runway. The in-op components table also has a table for sidestep minimums. We increase the CAT C and D minimums by a half mile. Let's look at one more thing about inoperative lighting on the approach plate for the ILS to runway 35 left at Reno. This approach course threads the needle through some pretty big mountain peaks. The visibility minimums are higher than what you'd see on an ILS or localizer approach. A mile and a half for the ILS, and a mile or two miles for the localizer, depending on which category aircraft we're in. Given these high visibility minimums, there's a note in the notes section saying the in-op table does not apply. Approach lighting allows the approach designers to reduce visibility minimums. What would normally require three quarters of a mile of visibility can come down to just a half mile with approach lighting, for example, because it allows the approach to continue even without the pilot being able to see the threshold right away. On this approach, the minimums are high enough that we should be able to see the runway when we're at the missed approach point, whether or not the lighting works. So there's no change to the visibility minimums. Keep in mind that these are flight visibilities, not necessarily reported visibilities. 
In part 91, there's nothing preventing us from flying the approach and taking a peek. If we gain sight of the runway at minimums, we can go ahead and continue down regardless of the reported weather. For operations under 135 or 121, if the reported weather is below minimums, an approach can't be commenced. So these changing minimums are crucial to keep in mind for commercial operators, which is one reason you find that so many of them utilize the Jeppesen charts. Working on your instrument rating? Want to be as professional and solid in the cockpit as you can? Training programs like the Flight Insight IFR Online Ground School will help you take your knowledge to an elite level and get you ready for your exam and checkride. Check it out now by visiting flight-insight.com IFR.